Welcome to Yummy Monday. Thanks for coming. I'm just gonna do this. Oh, we got one more person. Okay, thank you everyone. My name is Janet Forrest. I'm one of the adult program coordinators at the Nantucket Athenaeum. And tonight I'm gonna be showing everyone how to make bread pudding in a slow cooker, uh, which I really like to do. What I like about using a slow cooker is um, it, because it cooks at such a low temperature for a long time, you get that nice custard as opposed to a pan where it tends to stick and get crusty or a little too dry. And I'm gonna be showing, I pre-made a sweet bread pudding and I'm gonna show you how I make a savory bread pudding, but they're essentially the same recipe. You can just mix up the flavors. And um, if you're curious which recipe I'm following, I put it in the chat. It's the Betty Crocker recipe for slow cooker bread pudding. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and give me a shout out, but otherwise I'm just gonna plow along. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start, I have actually two slow cookers. I'm gonna start with this one. I don't know the exact size, but it's a pretty standard size. And what I've already done is greased it. You can use a spray, you can use butter. In this case, I just used some coconut oil, but you just wanna coat the inside. It'll uh, prevent it from sticking. And I also am using just a simple white bread. I did in fact make this bread, but, um, but you could just use any bread you like. You could, you know, depending on the flavor of bread pudding you're using, you could use that. So I just cubed it. Uh, th this recipe calls for eight cups. I just kind of eyeballed it. This is half of the loaf that I made. And what I like to do is actually layer it. So I'm gonna put in a layer of bread to my grease crock pot. And then because this is a savory bread pudding, I actually sauteed some onions and peppers and garlic. You can use whatever you like. I did one pepper and one onion and um, I think three cloves of garlic. So I'm going to put in a little bit of this on top and then and I like to cook it ahead of time because this doesn't cook all day uh, the veggies don't cook the way they would if you did like an eight hour um, stew and then and then I also bought this is where you can get creative I bought um, Monterey Jack cheese and cheddar cheese so the next thing I'm going to do is just layer a little bit of this on the jack. I'm going to layer a little bit of cheddar. There we go. And then um, just go like that. So I think what I'll end up doing is three layers. So a little more onion and pepper. I've done this before with Asiago cheese or you could do pepper jack or um, I maybe wouldn't do something like brie or something super soft. Um, but Parmesan would be great. A nice hard cheese would hold up, hold up well. And more onion and the rest of the bread. There you go. Okay. As you can see, it's kind of full in there. And then if it just looks like it's getting too full, it'll expand a little bit, but you don't have to worry about over, you can go pretty much right to the top. Because once we, once we put the eggs mixture in, it'll, um, it'll kind of go down a little bit. Okay, so then you can let that sit for a minute. And I'm gonna do the egg mixture. So I'm gonna do four eggs. The shells in. Now, for the sweet bread pudding recipe, 
this is where you would add a lot of the spices, the cinnamon, the um, nutmeg, vanilla, anything like that. And if you want to um, get creative with your seasoning, like I'm going to add a little bit of oregano, but you could add um, any different flavors. Just it's a good place to experiment um, and add your spices in. So for this, I'm just going to do eggs and I'm going to do a little bit of oregano. And you want to whisk this until it's nice and smooth. Um, you don't want any bits of yolk in there. You want to make it like a custard, basically. And I use, I don't know what the recipe calls for. I like using whole milk. I drink whole milk. I like whole milk. But you could probably use skim if you wanted. Um, some recipes might call for a heavy cream, but that might just be a bit too rich. Butter's exploding in the microwave. Okay. Um, so there's my gouache. And then you're going to add, um, it's a quarter cup of butter melted. So I'm going to mix that in. This is also where you could add salt and pepper. I've been using less salt in my recipes. Um, especially in this one, like the cheese probably has some sodium in it. Food tends to be, a lot of processed food has a lot of salt in it. So I tend to add that at the end. That's just personal preference. Okay. Now I'm using a regular bowl, but sometimes it's nice to use a bowl with a little spout. It makes it easier to pour. But I'm just going to take this and just pour it generously over. And then from there, I'm actually going to use a guys. Um, you're going to want to mix it so you're coating all the um, bread pieces. This one, because I layered it, I probably won't completely stir all of it, but I just want to make sure some of that egg mixture makes it to the top. And then and because it's four eggs, it's nice and easy to half this recipe if you want it to. You don't have to make the whole thing. There you go. What's it gonna look like? Oops. I like scrambled eggs. Um, so oh. this, I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and it's gonna allow the bread to absorb some of the liquid. Cover that and let that sit. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. I think, I mean, that's a, an important step, but it's not crucial. If you wanna just go ahead and turn it on and crank it, you can do that. So I'm just gonna let this sit for 10 minutes and kind of do its thing. And then, oh, did someone have a question? No, no. Okay. Um, okay. So then what I've also done through the magic of television and Zoom, um, I've pre-made a sweet um, bread pudding. And this one, I, I followed the recipe pretty much exactly. The only thing I didn't include in here was vanilla because uh, I didn't have any. Um, but I, and I used golden raisins. And I actually swapped out, I find a lot of recipes kind of too sweet for my taste. So instead of using one cup of sugar, I used a half cup of maple syrup instead. Although that might end up being sweeter in the end. But this is, it's in the, um, the egg wash and the milk. And I'll show you again. That's when you can get really creative with flavors. So you can even add like a little bit of bourbon, um, you could use brown sugar. You could, um, I like to, I really like cinnamon. So I actually doubled the cinnamon. I used two, two teaspoons instead of one. And so this recipe I did, 
I set it on low for two and a half hours and that was plenty. You could leave it on three. That's what's nice about the crock pot. It's pretty forgiving, but you will want to do, I think at least two and a half hours. And the way you're going to tell it's done, like most things when you bake, is um, just go ahead and stick a knife in there and you want to just make sure it comes out clean. So it came out pretty clean. I have some sugar and flavors in there, but that's pretty good. Um, and that's that. Does anyone have any questions so far? No? Okay. So hey, would you repeat how much, how much milk you used? Yes. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So the recipe is in the bottom. I'll hold it up though. Actually, I think I can share it on my screen. Do I have it? Great. Thank you. There you go. Okay. So this is, yes, this is the recipe I followed. Um, so I'm going to scroll down. So it was eight cups of bread. And actually I made this bread yesterday. Um, and I thought it would be actually more stale. I left it out overnight, but it, if it's re you want to use really stale bread. So I would make it even, or buy it even a couple days in advance. Like if you go to a bakery, um, you might want to cut it up because as it gets stale, it gets hard to cut, but cut it up and even leave that on the counter in a brown bag um, and let that get that bread get good and stale. And it'll help with the texture in the end. I did use the raisins. That's a place where you could use um, craisins, cr dried cranberries um, or a blend if you wanted. I used two cups of milk. I used four eggs and I replaced one cup of sugar with half cup of maple syrup and you did one cup of butter you can even replace this if you want it might be a little healthier you could do uh, coconut oil but you want one a quarter cup of something oily and i did two teaspoons of ground cinnamon this calls for one um the vanilla i skipped and uh, i skipped the whip, the whipped cream is for the end so I followed this recipe pretty, pretty closely. And this is, it's really the, um, the milk and eggs to bread ratio is kind of the most important thing. Everything else is sort of flavoring. And then, Thank you. yep. Now, what I did learn is this, oops, excuse me. Okay, what I did learn is this is a lot for one or even two people. But what you can do is actually scoop this out and um, freeze it in portions. It does freeze well, because you can always um, uh, put it back in the oven and, and bake it. Uh, and then because you've frozen it, all that sugar and everything will keep, especially a, a sweet one, will keep all that moisture. So you can throw it in the oven, bake it. Um, the other thing I've learned to do, now this is fresh, um, so normally it would have cooled, but the other thing I've learned to do with bread pudding, especially in the crock pot, it's not going to have that crispy flavor. I really like on the Cape Pan Davion, they have that really nice crispy bread pudding. Um, so if you really like that crispy flavor, I do have an alternative for that. So what I'm doing, I've been doing is heating up this cast iron pan. You can use any frying pan and, um, I'm actually going to get some butter. I have oil in here, but I'm actually going to wipe some of it out and use butter because I think it'll be nicer. Don't you do it, Ginger. I mean, Brody, excuse me. Can't believe I called you Ginger. Okay, so I'm heating this pan up. And I'm going to put just a little bit of butter on the bottom. So either a well-seasoned cast iron pan or a non-stick frying pan, unless you really like cleaning dishes. And um, I'm going to take out a piece of this. I just have a, I don't need it to be pretty, but if you want to be pretty, you can take it all out and slice it. But what I'm going to do is Scoop out a bit. I'm gonna put it on plate so you can see. So 
it is, um, it does come out very much a, um, a pudding. Lots of times if you buy it in a bakery, it's more of a, um, it's like a little more formed, but this is very jiggly. So what I'm gonna do is actually put it in the frying pan for a minute. I have this on, I have it on six. I'm gonna toss this in here. And this is also the way I like to heat it up. So if I were gonna have this in the morning, I'd put this in the fridge and it's cold. I'd put it actually on a little bit of a lower heat and throw it on here and actually cover it. Let me do that now. Turn that down a little bit. And just let that sit. And it gets, it gets just that nice like French toast brown. Um, and like a grilled cheese, if you can be real, the more patient you can be, the better. Um, so I've never done it when it's like fresh and hot, but that's how I do it. And then with the rest of this, what I would do is let it cool, um, and probably put it in the fridge overnight and then cut it up and portion it out. Cause I, I know even with, uh, between me and Andrew, we're not, we're not going to eat all this in time, but I have noticed that it does freeze well. Uh, okay. So then. We're just about at 10 minutes. Uh, what do I do with my cover? Okay. Okay. So this one's been sitting. Uh, what do I do with my thing? There is. I'm going to give it just one more stir. One more stir. Once again, it looks like scrambled eggs. And then again, I got my cover. And the most important thing, remember to turn it on. So on this one, uh, for this recipe, you turn it on low and you're gonna let it run for two hours. I would set, set it for two, and sorry, two and a half hours. At two hours, do check it because you might, um, depending on the ingredients and the size of the crock pot, um, that might change. So I would, I'm going to set my timer for two hours. Oops, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, oops, what did I do? Close enough. Okay. All right. Let's see how we're doing over here. Ooh, this looks good. So it might be hard to see, but see how that's kind of, see if I can do it this way. It kind of gets like a golden brown on top, so it's going to be a little bit crispy. So what I do is I, with the savory, I'll do that in the morning, create kind of like my savory French toast and I'll crack an egg over the top of it um, and make like a double like meta French toast. So I think that's about it. Does anyone have any questions or ideas on what they would try? How many people do you think that serve? That'll serve. This is Peggy. Yeah, this is um, this is actually one of well, when people were having brunch. This was one of my favorite things to be, bring for brunch because it is um, because it's so heavy. You could probably um, on a breakfast table you could probably feed like easily ten to twelve people. Wow. Um, depending on oh, how big the servings yeah. are. Because we have this, we have a church. Brunch and book club. So, you know, when you're going to something like that, you need a, a lot, you need a big amount. So that sounds, 
That sounds good. Yeah, what I like about it too is you can make it at home. It's hot and you can even just bring the whole crock pot if you wanted. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, and plug it in then when you don't have to ask them to micro it or anything. You can just mm -hmm. have your own little pot. Oh, that's a yeah. good idea. Keep it warm. Yeah. Plug it in. Yeah, wow. it does take, I mean, the biggest time expense is really just waiting for it to be done. So if your brunch is at 11 and you get up early enough to put it in there, or you could even make it the night before. Um, this is actually a great thing to make the night before, leave it all in the fridge to kind of absorb all the flavors, get up in the morning and just put it and plug it in. Um, oh, yeah. And you're good to go. Or if you have a fancy schmancy crock pot, it might have a timer on it. <laughs> um although you wouldn't want the eggs and everything sitting out overnight but yeah you could um this is something you could totally make the night before and let all like a lasagna let all the flavors marry and then turn it on the next good morning. idea yeah, i've never had the savory bread pudding but that sounds delicious with those veggies and the yeah. cheese that sounds like man that sounds like it'd be really good yeah, I kind of made that. I mean, I know there's recipes on that online. That's something I kind of just made up on my own because I, I do like sweet things, but I don't have a big sweet tooth. I like if you're giving me a chocolate bar or a bag of chips, I'll take the bag of chips all day. So, um, so yeah, I like the idea of like a like a salty kind of bready casserole type thing. So yeah, you could and you could do all kinds of things. I mean, you could put um, pre-cook hamburger and put it in there. You could do like a sausage, like Italian type thing. Um, it'd be good with like bacon. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do with that. I wonder if you could, um, like after like you've kind of cooked the bread pudding, uh, you could kind of cheat and just like pull, pull the, um, usually, I don't know if yours is stoneware, but mine, my crock pot just has a big stoneware. Mm -hmm and just um, put the, your oven on broiler and just put it under there. And maybe you could just like crisp up the top. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Or if you want to sprinkle some cat, um, cat, cat, cat on sugar, yeah. and, like have a yeah. torch. Yeah, you could, yeah, if you had a kitchen torch or something. Yeah, oh. yeah, this should be, I mean, I imagine it's oven That's safe. oven safe. You That's might oven. want to double check, but yeah. I imagine it just the heat at that level. Yeah, you could put it in, put yeah. the boiler on, and yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the last time we had a brunch, the girls are very competitive, <laughs> and they asked me, "What is that?" I was so embarrassed. I said, "Next time, I'll bring Krispy Kreme donuts." Ooh. But yeah, maybe this yeah. might be a good solution. Well. And what I like to say about the crock pot, like if I write a recipe book, it's going to be called your crock pot will forgive you because it cooks so long that you really can't, I mean, unless you put something really terrible in there, it's going to come out good. Um, and you could really experiment. I mean, you could probably make a bread pudding with Krispy Kreme donuts if you wanted. Um, but you could make anything, like it is because it cooks so slow and so low is like you could kind of do all kinds of things. I mean, you could buy like rye bread um, and put like, you know, do kind of a Reuben like bread pudding. You can really experiment with it. It doesn't, um, it's a very forgiving recipe. So you just want to be mindful. Like, um, are you, sure? you just want to go for like this kind of wet scrambled eggs texture. Um, it's kind of hard to see. So like you just really want that texture and as long as you have that it's going to probably come out really great. Okay. But yeah, I would the only thing I might stay away from or add later is um things that are very very wet like um like tomatoes or cucumbers like th those kind of vegetables that have a lot of water to them. Um, or if I was going to use apples, I might stew or I might, um, saute the apples first just to get some of the liquid out of them and then add them. Uh, that would be the only thing I'd be mindful of, or you can make, you can even make apples like applesauce, um, to go on top. But yeah. Oh, that would be good. Oh yeah. I could go on for hours, but yeah, it's yeah. like, as long as you get the, 
the basic recipe, which I put in there is kind of that egg to bread ratio and you can cut it in half. You can even experiment with that. Like if you feel like it's so moist and you want something a little drier, just add a little less, um, maybe one less egg and like a half cup less of milk or something. Um, There's a lot of sausage casserole. Like sometimes oh yeah. that's like everybody brings a sausage casserole. So there this would be different. I've never had had them bring sort of a French toast bread pudding. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So that's what I have for tonight. Let's go and put this on. Um, but yeah, I have come to really love my crock pot, but this in particular, because I I have made it in um, baking pans. It's, it's tasted fine, but it doesn't have that same, once it's over dry, there's not like a whole lot you can do. Whereas if it's like moist, you can always bake it or um, like Lincoln said, broil it and, and dry it out. But once it's like kind of already dry, there's not a whole lot you can do with it. Yeah. Um, I did that in record time. Does anyone have any thoughts or ideas? <laughs> I do everything fast. <laughs> well, it sounds like it could probably keep me from being totally humiliated. Totally. You can totally the girls. so easy. So. <laughs> and don't add bacon. I mean, something that would be good is that the recipe I just did for, I'm sorry if people aren't meat eaters, but add some bacon to that. Um, the Always a good idea. Yeah, I'm a vegetarian, but I'll admit bacon is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> From afar. Yeah. 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 But um, sure. yeah, if you think of like different, um, like themes that you'd like, like if it's an Italian recipe, instead of maybe using tomatoes, I would might maybe use um, sun-dried tomatoes with that yeah. oil. Like I used to make a quiche and I'd grease the pan with the oil from the sun-dried tomatoes. So you could even grease the crock pot and add the sun-dried tomatoes and artichoke and um, maybe some feta or um, Asiago cheese would be really good. Uh, any kind of really soft cheese, like I really like goat cheese, but I don't know that I'd mix it in a recipe like this. I think it would just be, I think it would just go to mush, but you could always add it, like serve it on the side. Well, we're Baptist, so we can't bring any alcohol, but I would think that you might taste good with some, doesn't it sometimes have rum or some, something alcohol in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little, well, and the thing is, is like a lot of the alcohol, will actually cook out, I think. Um, okay. So you could add like a little- I'll tell them that. I'll tell them it cooked out. <laughs> <laughs> you could do, um, yeah, add a little rum or a little bourbon, something like that would be probably good. Okay. Uh, yeah, or a little Irish cream instead of- some oh, yeah. cooking process too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the long and short of it, but it's pretty, The as you saw the prep time, I mean, I did some stuff ahead of time, but the prep time's pretty uh, short. And then you put it in and you just let it go. And even if you kind of lost track of time, whatever it goes an extra, you probably have like another 45 minutes um, before it would really start to burn. Um, but yeah, I think that that's it. That's all I have for you. All right. <laughs> Um, well, thanks, but I, I do want to plug our upcoming Yummy Mondays, so hold that thought. Um, let's see. What's next? I know, I know. We have, um, let's see, I think, I know coming up we have someone who's going to, let's see, where are we at? We have someone who's going to do some bread making, some more baking. Um, let's see, okay. So next week we have Sean Reed, um, who is gonna show us how to braid challah bread. Um, so you'll be able to, I'm sure if you ask him questions about the dough, I think the point is to form, show you the form of the dough, but he's a very experienced baker. So if you have any questions about bread and how to make it and um, baking tips, I'm sure he can answer all of that, but he's gonna show you the technique for forming and braiding the dough. And 
let's see, the week after that. Oh, we have our spice challenge on November 9th. So if you're not on Nantucket, you can pick up some fenugreek. Um, it's a Mediterranean uh, spice. I'll put it in the chat. And if you are on Nantucket and you wanna sign up for the spice challenge for the 9th, um, you can sign up anytime between now and then, but we'll distribute the spice um, uh, probably on Friday, November 6th. So you'll have the weekend to use it. And we're gonna do a fenugreek spice challenge and see what people can come up with. And then see the week after that. Oh, the week after that's not posted, but it's gonna be, um, uh, shoot, I have to look up her name. Her name is, I'm not gonna remember her name. But um, she's going to do a class on wine and how to use all your senses when tasting. And she said it, it doesn't just apply to wine. It could apply to food as well. Um, so I'm looking for that. I'm just uh, finally confirming. But yeah, it's going to be tasting wine with all your senses. So just in time for the holidays, we'll have some bread making and uh, wine drinking to get in the mood. So um, for that one, you can bring a glass of wine to have during the class. Um, okay. We'll bring grape juice. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Bring some cheese. Cheese and crackers and or cheese. something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts? Any other feedback from people? Um, what, yes, thank you. Okay, great. What, um, it, what are people inspired to make with their bread pudding going forward? Just make normal bread pudding. <laughs> Have it for anytime, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you make just a basic one, you could always add to it and it could be your meal all day. Yeah. I like apples and raisins too. Mm -hmm. a, little bit of, a little bit of fruit. Well, the nice thing about making it in the in the slow cooker too, it frees up your oven. So if you're cooking a big meal, then you can have something that's cooking in the slow cooker while you're doing all the other stovetop and oven. So mm -hmm. this is, this would be wonderful for, and who knows what Thanksgiving is going to be like this year, but yeah, anyway, yeah. it'd be great to have something like that for people who are come, who come. And, and also since you can, it serves so many people, mm -hmm. you can make one batch and then continue to serve it to others. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And a savory one is a great thing as a side dish. So it's something great to make like on a Sunday or a Monday. And then you have it all week. So if you make like, you know, we have fish a lot, so we'll buy the fish, but then, you know, we're looking for a side. Um, and it's a great thing you could bring to work and just heat up in the microwave if you wanted or a toaster oven if you have it for those people that are still going to work. Um, but yeah, it's a great thing to make at the end of the week and just kind of scoop away. And like I said, it does freeze well. If I were going to freeze it though, I'd probably, um, freeze it in portions so you can pull it out bit by bit. And, it, and it wasn't, it wasn't real expensive to make either, was it? Not, not too bad? No, no I mean, if you wanted to make a really fancy schmancy one, you could spend a lot of money on like really nice cheeses or something, but the basic ingredients are just bread and eggs and milk. Okay. And you'd have that around too. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you oh you know what you could do around Thanksgiving do one with eggnog. I mean I don't oh, know, no. but I love eggnog. Oh, I love oh. eggnog. Yeah, what I would do in that case is probably like that already has egg in it, obviously. So I'd probably replace like half the milk. So not do all eggnog, but do replace half the milk with you know, something like that would be good. Yeah, yum. Was someone gonna say something else? Yes, I I got caught on a call and so I got on late. Uh, sorry, I wanted to hear about the savory, but I know everybody else has had, could you put that in the chat or something? So I could just kind of some of your ideas. Yeah, yeah, so what I put in the chat, so the recipe, some, the savory is what I put up um, just on my own, uh, what I did on, made up on my own, but the one in the chat is the basic recipe of the eggs and the milk. Okay. Um, and the butter, so all that keep, and then the, it's just really changing the flavoring. So what I did was, um, when I put the bread and I layered in some shredded cheese, 
So you can use whatever you want, but I was just lazy and just bought the shredded already, but you can shred it yourself. So I did cheddar and um, Monterey Jack. And then um, I also sauteed an onion and a red pepper mm. ahead of time. So I just layered the cheese and the red pepper in there and then added the eggs and the milk and the butter um, and then mixed it in. So it's essentially the same recipe, but instead of all the cinnamon and the sweet flavors, I added more savory flavors. And so that's when you were talking about adding bacon or adding sausage if you want to add meat or something. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the recipe um, is in the chat if people want that. Is it? And, go ahead. And I is can- Is the recipe in the chat? The Not the savory one, the sweet one is. Oh, okay. And I can I just see Fen Greek in the chat. Yeah, I don't think. Oh, you do. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it doesn't post until. I wonder if you can't. You can't see retroactively what's in the chat. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> so there, I just added. Okay, it. there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. So that's the link to the rest, the sweet recipe, and the portion. So you would use um, the bread's the same, the milk, the eggs and the butter is all the same. And that's everything, and the salt, you could add the salt. Um, and it's really just the flavoring that changes. Um, but yeah, think about, the only thing to keep in mind is just your liquids. So I didn't add the sugar, which is a liquid agreement to a ingredient to the savory, but I added all that cheese, which has a lot of moisture in it. Um, and the onions and the peppers would add moisture. So this one's likely to come out um, a little bit uh, drier than the sweet one because it'll just, yeah, has less liquid ingredients. So you don't need to, you don't need to saute the onions? I do, I do ahead of time. You don't have to, but I like to, I like them kind of caramelized. Yeah. So the, if it were, if this were a recipe where I was gonna cook it for eight hours, like I did a whole chicken the other day and I threw just an onion and some celery and I threw it all in raw, um, then I would throw it in raw if it's eight hours. But for the shorter recipe, I don't, it doesn't like cook as well. Um, I feel like it needs that little head start. Okay, thanks. And I like, I like to like burn it, like crisp it up a little bit. Um, Cause then it just adds a little bit of the bitterness, a little bit more flavor to it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, yeah, and uh, I'll send everyone, I'll kind of type up a recipe for the savory. So everyone has it. I have everyone's email. Um, but yeah, and email me back when you have ideas or you try something new. I'm always looking for recommendations. 